Hello, my name is Michael Flavin from King's College London, and I'm here to talk to you about the Principles Global Leadership Award. This is a module in leadership taught as a collaborative social practice. And if you come to undertake postgraduate study at King's College London, you'll be able to take this course, possibly as part of your master's programme, possibly as a standalone module in addition to your master's programme. But the opportunity is there for everyone, and it's an important subject area to grapple with as the 21st century unfolds. In this presentation, I'll give you some sense of the background of the Principles Global Leadership Award and the rationale why we created it in the first place. We'll look at some different perspectives on leadership. We'll consider the requirements, what you have to do to get it. And crucially, we'll also make the case for why you should do it, the benefits that it brings your way. Firstly, to give you some context and background, we devised this course in 2015-16. And the idea behind it was to think of leadership not as an individual cognitive trait, so not to think of leadership as something you're either born with or not. Instead, our approach right from the beginning was to regard leadership as a collaborative social practice. It's something we do with other people. If you get marooned on a desert island, you can call yourself the leader, but it's a meaningless statement unless you have followers. So leadership is necessarily a relational concept and terms like followership and teamship are just as important as leadership. We take a, some theory about leadership, some of which we'll look at in a moment, and some of these are established theories of leadership, but because this is global leadership, we also extend that and so we look at how different cultures look at leadership and what we can learn from that. We then take the theory that we study and apply it to a range of case studies. Again, these are international, global, because the idea all the time is to think that in the 21st century, the great challenges of our time are global. The ecological crisis doesn't recognise national boundaries. Uh, the forced migration of people is a politically contentious issue, which again transcends na national boundaries. And the starkest lesson we've learned from 2020 is that a virus doesn't ask for a visa. So if we're going to study leadership in the 21st century, it's almost necessarily a global practice because the challenges that confront us are global. So as well as case studies, we also break leadership down into component parts of aim and strategy and tactics. And behind it all, we give some thought to the why question. Why would one want to lead? Which then teases out a discussion of leadership values. So a first question to consider if you're thinking about leadership is, do we need it at all? This is a useful quote that we often begin with, taken from 2011 from a textbook on leadership. But I think if anything, it's become even more compelling in its argument now. And with the problems that I was just talking about, one thing that's clearly needed is leadership. And so the question comes about what type of leadership or how should we think about leadership if we intend practicing leadership? To introduce a little theory, um, this is from uh, one of the major scholars on, on leadership as a social practice, that's Keith Grin. And he comes up with four typologies of leadership. Leadership as position, leadership as person, leadership as results and leadership as process. So leadership as position is something to a greater or lesser extent we'll all be familiar with if we've been part of any formal organisation, a university, a workplace. There, is, there are people in positions of seniority and so their leadership is positional. What's interesting here is what happens when that relationship between leader and followers breaks down or is challenged and what that tells us about leadership and what we can learn from it. We also think about leadership as person. As some leaders are considered by their followers to be charismatic, and we all know the term charisma. Yet if we're going to study leadership as a collaborative social practice, then we have to interrogate the terms we're given. Uh, charisma is subjective. You might find someone charismatic whom I don't, or vice versa. Leadership is also transient, it's ephemeral. You, we may find someone charismatic, yet six months hence, we may decide that we no longer feel that way about them. We also look at leadership as results. 
Um, this is a very common metric for assessing leaders. They're judged by results. But if our core contention is correct, that leadership is a collaborative social practice, then it may be unfair to pin results onto one person, particularly as in leadership situations, a whole wealth of independent variables come over a result. Nonetheless, it remains an important metric for leadership and it's right that we look at it. And finally, we also think about leadership as process. In some respects, this seems very unremarkable. It's really leadership as almost an administrative act overseeing standard operation procedure. But then we are at risk, I think, of conflating leadership with management. And so we might start to say that the entry point for leadership is what happens when the standard operating procedure breaks down? What happens when something occurs that isn't in the rule book? And as you can see by just this very brief introduction to leadership here, we see what a complex phenomenon it is. And we see that by applying different lenses to leadership, we draw out different insights. And if you go on to study the Principles Global Leadership Award, you'll be encouraged to think of leadership through these multiple lenses, to look at specific case studies and see what we can learn from them and how we can take that learning and put it into practice. But as I said earlier, we also look at other cultures' approaches to leadership, um, one of which is the principle of Ubuntu. One of the things we, we benefit from on the Principles Global Leadership Award is King's extensive network. So among the people who've taught on our leadership programmes and modules at King's, we have the former Australian Prime Minister, Julia Gillard. We have the former UK Home Secretary, Charles Clark, and former Universities Minister, Lord David Willits. We also have Professor Iron Rensberg, and I'm indebted to Iron for introducing me to the philosophy of Ubuntu, which is an African philosophy for life and for leadership. And why I think it interests us is it's explicitly collaborative. I am because you are. It's a recognition that we're a gregarious species and we find meaning in and through each other. Uh, Iron was an anti-apartheid activist who spent three spells in prison, including a spell in solitary confinement, yet later went on to become the first black vice chancellor of the University of Johannesburg. And we benefit from all these different voices on the PGLA to enhance students' learning and to really create possibilities for what we can do with leadership hereafter. We also look at Taoist approaches to leadership. Why I think they're interesting is because they're in many respects the antithesis of classic Western approaches to leadership, which are about a forceful individual imposing their will on circumstance. Taoist approaches are much more about finding an accommodation with things as they are and not labouring under the delusion that one can simply impose one's will on circumstance. And we also look at indigenous American Indian ways of thinking about leadership. Now, it's important to remember in the way that we go about teaching leadership at King's that it isn't a question of coming up with a league table of different cultures approaches to leadership. Instead, it's a question of broadening our knowledge of different, color, different cultures' understanding of leadership so that we can then, through collaborative work, through discussion, just state our own understandings of leadership and think about how we can put them into practice. And therefore, as well as studying different forms of leadership from different cultures, it's also important that we critique them. So you'll see in the article we use there that the writer of the article argues that it was the inability of indigenous American Indian communities to unite under one leader that disadvantaged it when it came then to a conflict with the settlers who, who came to the United States of America. And so all the time, as well as exploring theories of leadership, it's important that we critique those theories too, so that we develop our own critical and analytical armory and become more accomplished leadership scholars and hopefully then leadership practitioners too. To move on then from that summary of the curriculum, if you like, on the PGLA, we now want to give some thought to what you have to do 
on the PGLA if you come here and study it. You will be looking at different cultural approaches to leadership and we'll be applying those in a range of case studies. You'll be encouraged to develop your own approach to leadership, but even that will be done in collaboration with your fellow students. And then as we develop our understandings, we also think about ways in which we can apply them in real world contexts. And one thing to note about this course, if you do it, is that you will be working with students from across all nine faculties at King's. It's an opportunity to undertake interdisciplinary study, to move away from the silo of your own discipline and to get to hear other students' perspectives. And in so doing, to enrich your own understanding because you start to see how not only different cultures think about leadership and other forms of social practice, but how different disciplines think about this too. So you broaden your understanding of leadership, but you broaden your understanding more widely through exposure to different conversations, different insights and different people from all over the world. King's is proud of its international community. In terms of what you get for it, well, you submit assignments. There's three formative and one summative assignments. The three formative are all short, 1500 words, and the one summative is longer. It's about 1500 words and in that final assessment we ask you to look at the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, find a target from within that goals and propose an aim, strategy and tactics for how you would approach that problem. The resources you're going to need, particularly the resources of other people, how you would manage frustration and setback, what your goal would be, how you'd organise your strategy. If you successfully complete the PGLA, firstly, you'll get recognition. If you're doing it within your master's degree, you'll get the academic credits. If you're doing it separately, it still goes on your higher education achievement report. You get all the opportunities that come from interdisciplinary study about meeting other people and learning new perspectives. And you also develop new networks which will transcend traditional academic boundaries. So, for example, we maintain an online community via LinkedIn of previous PGLA students. And once you have access to that network, you have access to people who have undergone the same course as you, have the same interests as you, and can be useful to you as you develop your own leadership journey. And we do say to every student who comes on this course, um, don't think of this course as a full stop at the end of it. We're pleased if you successfully accomplish the course and gain the recognition but that's only half the role as far as we're concerned. What we'd really like you to do is to think of this course, not, not at the ending, not as a full stop, but as a springboard. We want you to take the learning that you gain on the course and then put it to work in the world, working collaboratively with others to see what you can achieve. And so we say, this is a springboard. We want you to take this knowledge and use it, work with others, see what you can accomplish and how the study that we do can comprise that important foundational level layer for you to think about leadership, for you to think about working with others and thinking about what can arise from that to make the world a better place. Hopefully from that brief summary of what you do and what you have to do and what you get, we've piqued your interest. So firstly, we have a web page, the screenshot above is from that web page. Take a look around. On it we've got a couple of testimonies from other students who previously done the course. See what they have to say. Take a look at the requirements. Uh, take a look at when you can apply. We teach the course in both term one and term two so you can do it in either and it's completely online and we have unique content on the course from many of the people who have taught on the course and who have experience of frontline leadership. You'll see too, we have our own dedicated email address, pgla at kclac UK. If you can't find the information you're looking for on our webpage or in this presentation, please take a look at that, get in touch with us. We'll be more than happy to help you. 
Those are references I've referred to in this presentation. And again, if you end up joining the course, there's a reading list so you can make as much of the course as you want to and learn as much as you can about it. Our role here is to support you on these early stages of thinking about leadership and thinking about what you can do with it hereafter. Those are my contact details. Uh, I'm a full-time academic at King's and I'm the course director. So if you do study on the course, you'll be liaising and interacting with me regularly. I host weekly webinars throughout the 10 week duration of the module. And they're an opportunity again to both consolidate the learning we've undertaken online and also to extend that learning by thinking about the issues that arise from the course materials and how we can apply them. So I hope you've done enough in that brief presentation to spark your interest in studying the Principles Global Leadership Award at King's College London. Global leadership is an exciting new subject in the higher education curriculum when it's taught, as we teach it, as a collaborative social practice. If we simply take a look around us as the 21st century unfolds, we can see how the leadership challenges of our time are global. And if we want to be best prepared to engage with those problems, then learning we can do now will have important benefits to us and the communities we serve as we develop. Thank you very much for listening. And I hope that I get the opportunity to learn and work with you in the times ahead at King's College London. Goodbye. <laughs>